Hello everybody, I am Dan, aka Pollock Star here with another mod spotlight for you today. I am in my desert temple, really cool looking place, uh, checking out the Ritual Enchanting mod. Now, there are a lot of enchanting mods out there, but this is one of the f my favorite that I have ever come across. It maybe is still a little, uh, needs a little work, a few new features could be added, but I really like it. Uh, the reason I like it is because it it isn't simple. It make it gives you some control over what you're doing without actually making it just as easy as picking from a list of enchantments like the uh, so like the ever popular enchanting plus mod does. Now the way that this works is it starts by giving you a brand new enchanting table. Now this is called the ritual enchantment table. It is crafted. It replaces the uh, it replaces the re the recipe for the uh, vanilla enchanting table. It's the same recipe, will instead give you a ritual enchantment table. Uh, however, you can also craft um, the uh, you can craft the vanilla enchantment table by taking your ritual enchantment table and replacing it with a red carpet. And similarly, as you saw a second ago, you can r uh, make a ritual enchantment table by placing some blue carpet on top of a vanilla enchantment table. So if you really, really, if you really want the enchantment vanilla enchantment table, maybe you need it for a, comp a recipe or a component uh, in some other mod or maybe you just don't want to do the new system for some reason you still have that option but the way that this works take a look inside it's an entirely new interface it's really cool uh, it still functions uh, gets you extra uh, levels extra possible levels by placing bookshelves around them uh, but uh, it doesn't give you options in terms. It doesn't give you the options in terms of uh, three different possible possibilities that you can choose from. It just takes the maximum amount that you can, the uh, maximum amount of levels that you have, and it will automatically enchant it with that full number of levels that you possibly can every time, so long as there's enough knowledge on display around it. Uh, also, there's you notice that there are these books slots on the side here. Uh, if I were to go into here and get, say, uh, protection and uh, magic resistance, put it. I wanted to put that on this chest plate here. That's exactly how that works. Protection, magic resistance. Now you see these. Uh, these symbols come up here. These are not the way that these symbols are supposed to look. Uh, this is still something that needs to be fixed by the guy. It's supposed to look like. Uh, some magical glowy runes. Instead, these are just symbols that kind of define what's happening to the, what's going to happen to to your uh, to your enchanted enchanted piece, but don't really give it a huge clue. So if I uh, wave my magic wand over it, there you go, protection and magic resistance. So that takes the function of the uh, of the anvil. So you don't have to worry about going back to an anvil anymore. Uh, to put books on, to transfer book enchantment onto a tool or an item, because it never really made too much sense anyways. Of course, there's still the option of just randomly enchanting it with the maximum level. See, protection, unbreaking, magic resistance, fire yara, protection. See, it's, it's a pretty, pretty simple stuff. Uh, it next adds these items right here. These are called sensors. Now, the way that sensors work is they add, I think, like half a half a level to each thing you can do. Yep. Oh, okay. So we've got uh, what? Three, six, nine, twelve, sixteen. We've got sixteen uh, sensors around here right now, and that has increased the maximum level and enchantment uh, to by ten to nineteen here. Now we can light up these sensors. As you notice, it looks like there's coals in the bottom. It's because they're meant to be lit. So if we throw in, uh, if we get ourselves, if we get ourselves like a diamond pickaxe here, and we'll find ourselves some cobwebs, huh? Yeah, let's get some cobwebs. There are some cobwebs in here. Notice that you you can burn just about any item in here, and the type of item that you're burning will influence the enchantments that you can possibly get. 
which is really awesome. Exactly what it, exactly what items give what enchantments is up to experimentation. I've experimented a little bit and found some things, but I'm not going to tell you guys. I'm going to leave that up to you. So we've got lots of cobwebs burning in here. So you notice there's these symbols here, whatever those mean. Wave a magic wand over it. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I'm supposed to enchant my pickaxe. Ha! <laughs> Oops. All right. So let me. Uh, <laughs> you can't give you. You can't give silk touch on a. Not uh, a chest plate. Silly Dan. Silly, silly Dan. All right. So throw it. So you notice that they did extinguish afterwards as it used up all the magic. But let's throw the diamond pickaxe in there. Enchant it. Look at that silk touch. Almost guaranteed with all these all these sensors going on. Now you don't need this many sensors. Uh, I just kind of did it for visual effect and also to make sure I could get the maximum th le 30 levels of enchantment on there. But that is the sensors, and that is one way that you can influence the type of enchantment you get. In addition, uh, you can the, using the sensors also gives fine-tuned control over the level that, of enchantment that you want. So you only get you're not given the option of three different enchantments, three different enchantment levels with this ritual enchantment table. Uh, so you can say just uh, light a handful of them. Say it was 19, uh, was was 19 level. Now it's 21. Uh, get a light a couple more. Now it's level 24. See, so it's, it, it gives you some pre, pre, pretty precise control over what you're getting. Just It's just not uh, quite as simple as picking and choosing from a list, which I really like. Now, the next, way to, the next way to control what you might get is with these guys. These are book stands. And book stands, are, they're decorative, and they're nice, but they hold enchanted books. Uh, is their, there's their primary purpose. So you notice I'm still getting these, uh, I'm still, get, still getting the bookshelf, the benefit from the bookshelf here, uh, but it's not a, not quite enough bookshelves. Uh, oh, I need, I was getting some diamond boots, wasn't I? There we go. Let's get some diamond boots. So I've got four books of haste here. Now haste is a, uh, enchantment given by Thaumcraft. So this does work really well with, uh, let's get rid of these, this does work really well uh, even with modded enchantments, which is pretty awesome if you ask me. So we've got th four books of Haste 3 sitting in here, plus the handful of just vanilla bookshelves going on. So throw the diamond boots in there, and look at that. Oh, oh, it didn't work. <laughs> See, there's still a there's there is still a certain level of randomness to uh, to this. You're not guaranteed to get what you want every single time. Uh, or maybe you're not guaranteed to get it at all. There's haste. There's haste three. There's uh, okay. So this is not going quite what I expected. There's haste three again. Um, you might need. There's haste three again. Okay, so it looks like so it's about half the time with using four bookshelf, using four book stands, about half the time or so using four book stands, I've gotten gotten the one that I wanted. So it is still a little random, but uh, does give you a little bit of control. So it's so not it's not perfect, but it's still pretty awesome. Now over here, I finally set up. I uh, just this little setup here to show you that. All of these items can work in tandem to, in, in, in tandem with each other. I don't have any books on the book stands right now, but the enchantment, the ritual enchantment table, will draw power and draw influence from any of the item, uh, any of the items. Vanilla bookshelves, sensors, book stands, even bibliocraft books. I've tested it, and I don't have it set up here, but even bibliocraft bookshelves uh, will give you the same bonus as vanilla book uh, vanilla bookshelves will, just like they would for the vanilla enchantment table which is pretty awesome. I don't feel like I need to show this setup in action, although I would like to mention that you'll notice everything is further away than in the other three setups. Now I did this just to show you that that is an option. Uh, you can set everything up uh, an, enti an entire extra block space away from the enchantment table, than you, the ritual enchantment table, than you can with the vanilla enchantment table. Uh, it says there ha as long as there is either uh, between one and two spaces, uh, empty empty spaces between the enchantment table and the source of knowledge, whatever that might be. 
So it gives you a little more options, a little more room for creativity when decorating and, and things along that nature. Also, of course, gives you more room to put your various sources of knowledge. Now, the final thing that this mod changes, I don't want to say adds, but changes, is the anvil. It does technically add a new type of anvil. This is the ritual anvil. Now, the ritual anvil's recipe is the exact same as the vanilla anvil's recipe. It has been replaced. Uh, so when you make it, when you go to make an anvil, you will by default make the ritual anvil. However, they can be transformed back and forth just by crafting it. Say I set up a crafting table here, ritual anvil, 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 iron ingots. Oh. <laughs> Okay, you know what? Um, that is a con that that should go back to a ritual anvil. That really should. Um, that is a conflict with the dungeon with the dungeon crawler mod, which I also have installed. <laughs> uh, so if it's ju if you don't have dungeon crawler, then it would just go back and forth. As it stands, we've got a little recipe conflict there. Uh, <laughs> oops. Anyways, the difference between uh, the vanilla anvil. And the ritual anvil is yeah, as such. I'll put down the vanilla anvil here. Uh, so it look you can tell just so you can tell it looks exactly the same. The UI has not changed. Uh, the ritual anvil, despite being called a ritual anvil, actually has significantly less magical properties than the vanilla anvil does. It no longer allows for the combining of books together. It no longer allows for combining of magical items, uh, enchanted items, to get a, a to transfer enchantments from one item to to another, uh, that the, both of those functions have been taken over by the ritual enchanting table, which seems appropriate to me. Uh, what it does, in addition, what it or what it does add, is that actually what it does, what it removes, is the level cap. Uh, there is no experience cap anymore for repairing items. Any magical item, no matter how much you've repaired it. Uh, it is ca you can, you will be able to repair it as long as you have sufficient experience levels in it. Uh, also, it's taken away the penalty to repairing named items. So named items uh, don't cost any more to repair than unnamed items, which is is pretty cool in my opinion. As kind of a little 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 bit of an annoyance. But that is going to be it for this mod review, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked the mod. I think it's a really awesome mod. If you would like to see this in the Eldritch Studies mod pack, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment uh, saying saying you liked it. Uh, I I think it's a perfect feel uh, for for the what the all the other mods that we have going in that pack. Uh, and anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. In general, uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel, share the video. And uh, stay tuned for more mod spotlights, more Eldritch studies, and a couple other things as they, uh, as they come out. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.